Exodus 22 to 24. If a thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there shall be no guilt of bloodshed for him. If the sun has risen on him, he is guilty of bloodshed. He shall make restitution. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the stolen beast is found and his hand alive, whether it is an ox or a donkey or a sheep, he shall pay double. If a man causes a field or vineyard to be eaten by letting his animal loose and it grazes in another man's field, he shall pay restitution from the best of his own field and from the, beast, the best of his own vineyard. If fire breaks out and is spread to thorn bushes, so that the shocks of grain or the standing grain in the field are consumed, he who started the fire shall surely make restitution. If a man gives to his neighbor money or goods to keep, and it is stolen out of a man's house, if the thief is found, he shall pay double. If the thief is not found, then the master of the house shall come near to God to find out whether or not he has put his hand on his neighbor's goods. For every matter of trespass, whether it is for ox, for donkey, for sheep, for clothing, or for any kind of lost thing about which one says, This is mine, the cause of both parties shall come before God. He, who God, he whom God condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. If a man delivers to his neighbor a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any kind of animal to keep, and it dies, or it is injured, or driven away, no man seeing it, the oath of Yahweh shall be between them both. He has not put his hand on his neighbor's goods, and its owner shall accept it, and he shall not make restitution. But if it is stolen from him, the one who stole shall make restitution for its owner. If it is torn to, in pieces, let him bring it for evidence. He shall not make restitution for what has been torn. And if, a man, and if a man borrows anything of his neighbors and it is injured or dies, its owner not being with it, he shall surely make restitution. If its owner is with it, he shall not make it good. If it is a leased thing, it came for a lease, for its lease. If a man seduces a virgin who is not engaged and lies with her, he shall surely pay a dowry for her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. You shall not allow a sorceress to live. Anyone who lies with an animal shall surely be put to death. He who sacrificed to any god other than Yahweh alone is to be put under a ban of destruction." You shall not wrong an outsider or oppress him, for you were outsiders in the land of Egypt. You shall not take advantage of any widow or fatherless child. If you take advantage of them at all, and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will burn. And I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my, any of my people... With you who is poor, you shall not be to him as a creditor. You shall not charge him interest. If you take your neighbor's garment as a pledge, you shall restore it to him before the sun goes down, for that is his only covering. It is his garment for his skin. What, shall, what would he sleep in? It will happen when he cries to me that I will hear, for I am gracious." You, you shall not revile God, nor curse a ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer from your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. You shall give the firstborn of your sons to me. You shall do likewise with your cattle and with your sheep. It shall be with you its mother seven days. Then on the eighth day you shall give it to me. You shall be holy men to me. Therefore you shall not eat any meat that is torn by animals in the field, you shall cast it to the dogs. You shall not spread a false report. Do not join your hand with the wicked to be malicious to be a malicious witness. 
You shall not follow a crowd to do evil. You shall not testify in court to side with a multitude to pervert justice. You shall not favor a poor man in his cause. If you find your enemy's ox or his donkey go astray, going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. If you see the donkey of him who hates you lying helpless under its burden, do not leave him. You shall surely help him with it. You shall not pervert justice to your poor in his lawsuit. Keep far from, from a false charge and do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. You shall, not take, you shall take no bribe, for a bribe blinds those who have sight and perverts the words of the righteous. You shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger, since you were strangers in the land of Egypt. For six years you shall sow your land and shall gather in its increase. But the seventh year you shall let it rest, lie fallow, like the poor of your people may eat, that the poor of your people may eat. And what they leave, the animal of the field shall eat. In the same way, you shall deal with your vineyard and your olive grove. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may have rest, and that the son of your servant and the stranger may be refreshed. Be careful to do all things that I have said to you, and do not mention the name of other gods, or even let them be heard out of your mouth. You shall declare... You shall celebrate a feast to me three times a year. You shall observe the feast of Metzot. Seven days you shall eat matzah, as I commanded you, and the time appointed in the month of Aviv. For if you came out of, for in it you came out of Egypt, and no one shall appear before me empty-handed. Also the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labors which you sow in the field, and the feast of ingathering at the end of the year, when you gather in your labors out of the field, three times in the year all your male, all your males shall appear before the Lord Yahweh. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with hemets. The fat of my feast shall not remain all night until the morning. You shall bring the first of the first fruits of your ground into the house of Yahweh your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you by the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Pay attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgression. For my name is in him. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and adver- adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and will bring you to the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor follow their practices. But you shall utterly overthrow them and break their pillars in pieces. You shall serve Yahweh your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from among you. No one will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror before you. Before you, and I will confuse all the people in whom you come, and I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. I will send the hornet before you, which will drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, the Hittites from before you. I will not drive them out before you. I will not drive them out before, from before you in one year, because the land will become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against you. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have grown in number and possessed the land. I will set your border from the Red Sea even to the Sea of the Philistines and from the wilderness to the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in your land because they will make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. Then he said to Moses, 
Come up to Yahweh, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship from a distance. Moses alone shall come near to Yahweh, but they shall not come near. The people shall not go up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahweh has spoken we will do. Moses wrote down all the words of Yahweh. Then he rose up early in the morning and built an altar at the base of the mountain with 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the sons of Israel who burnt, who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of cattle to Yahweh. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. He took the blood, the book of the covenant. He read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, We will do all that Yahweh has said and be obedient. Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Look, this is the blood of the covenant which Yahweh has made with, your, with you concerning all these words. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abahu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up. They saw that God, the God of Israel under his feet was like a paved work of sapphire stone, like the skies for clearness. He did not say, he did not lay his hand on the nobles of the sons of Israel. They saw God and ate and drank. Now Yahweh said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay here and I will give you the stone tablets with the Torah and the mitzvot that I have written that you may teach them. Then Moses rose up with Joshua, his servant, and Moses went up unto God's mountain, and he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come again to you. Behold, Aaron and her are with you. Whoever is involved in a dispute can go to them. Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of Yahweh settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. The seventh day he called to Moses out of the middle of the cloud. The appearance of the glory of Yahweh was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the eyes of the sons of Israel. Moses entered into the, into the middle of the cloud and went up on the mountain and saw, and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights.